right, and we are live here. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, it's great to see you again, and it's also great to be back uh, hosting these uh, regular updates. For those uh, that are um, have joined us before, hello. For those that are new, uh, I'm the Gossip Guy, your trusted source for news and developments from the world powered by Hashgraph. And uh, I'm excited to cover a bunch of topics, uh, especially because this has been a very uh, exciting week, uh, both in the world powered by Hashgraph, but then also within distributed ledger technologies uh, overall. I think many of the folks that have been following the news uh, this past week can also attest to that too. And also, uh, I'm joined today with a very special guest who I'll introduce very shortly um, after I get through some, some introductions here. So uh, just to dive in here, uh, so as I said, uh, I'm sorry to have been uh, missing in action for the uh, past couple weeks here. Partially is because uh, I've been traveling uh, the past couple weeks. I was in San Francisco, then went to Copenhagen, Denmark, and then was out in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. You know, both doing things related to work, visiting family, et cetera. And then for folks that might know me on a personal level, also know that I have a wedding coming up, uh, you know, in less than a week. So I've been a little bit busy with that and I've had to kind of uh, prioritize things. But I'm back uh, to join you guys and we have a lot of good uh, topics I want to cover. So just taking a look at our agenda today, uh, we got four kind of core areas to go over. First thing being the Hedera Consensus Service uh, announcement uh, that was released earlier this week. This is something I'm personally very excited about and I think it's gonna contribute to the overall adoption of uh, Hedera overall. Second, uh, unless you've been living under a rock this past week, I think many folks are well aware of what Libra is. Uh, and as a result, uh, I've kind of formulated some of my own uh, opinions and thoughts as it relates to Libra. So I want to take some time to talk about that and also maybe draw some parallels as it relates to uh, Hedera Hashgraph. Third item we're going to cover is just some general updates uh, related to the community testing program and also uh, as we look to open access, which is uh, hopefully coming up very soon. And then fourth, if we have time to cover them, uh, I also came across some other updates that I thought would be interesting to share. So uh, I figured we would uh, cover over those. So before we uh, dive into like all the topics today, as I always uh, request, if you find this video to be helpful and informative uh, or just enjoying the stream, make sure to smash that like button and then also consider subscribing if you want to stay posted on these uh, further developments. I always appreciate your support and uh, yeah. Um, also do want to um, disclose before we also get into any of the topics too, as a reminder, as folks are aware, uh, the Gossip Guy, I'm not an employee of Hedera Hashgraph, nor um, I receive any compensation or opportunities to invest by putting together this type of content. All the topics that are going to be discussed here today are my personal views and opinions and not those of Hedera Hashgraph. And also with my guest that's going to be joining me, all the views that they share are also their own and of their own opinion. At the end of the day, we're all active community members like yourselves, so let's have a uh, healthy discussion. So without further delay, I'm very honored today to uh, introduce a very special guest, and it's no none other than Dr. Nick, as I like to call it, uh, who's the founder of HashHash.info, and uh, without stealing your thunder here, Nick, uh, do you want to kind of uh, quickly uh, introduce yourselves and maybe uh, obviously give a plug for uh, hashhash.info? Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, thanks for having me here. Yes, um, uh, hash hash info is what we've, we've been doing here for four or five months now, and um, I'm very excited to to talk a little bit about uh, community testing here today. So and share a little bit some of. Uh, the fantastic news we had uh, this week about the Hedera consensus service. So let's let's talk a little bit about this stuff. Awesome. And then, hey Nick, uh, I'm I'm pulling up hashhash.info here. Do you mind uh, just kind of get also giving like a little bit of an overview of what uh, hashhash.info is and kind of what you've uh, put together there and 
op te hash, 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 hash info. Het is hash, hash info. Well, it started um, uh, as a, a leaderboard. Um, just a little bit uh, to, to see where my testing uh, stands compared to everybody else's testing. That was back then in phase one, uh, late January, early February. And uh, it turned out that it uh, was uh, a good help to to the community. So what I did is uh, uh, built a little bit upon the leaderboard idea and uh, started taking daily snapshots of um, uh, balances. And um, today we do have pretty much uh, balances for every wallet, uh, sorry, every account in Hedera Hashgraph. And um, um, it's, it's, it's a great way to, to, to have a visual of, of what's going on in that network. And uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, uh, Hedera Hash, Hashgraph is, is growing uh, yeah. quickly. And uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff we can talk about this. So uh, there's a little bit of um, a, a backhunting game going on. It was a little bit something to, to have fun with, but it turned out to be also a tool to test the speed of the Hedera network. So it's, it's, it's a small game where you really just swipe with your mouse over a small uh, critter <laughs> traveling across the screen. And the, the moment it, it, it falls down, you receive a tidy micropayment, but, but it's just instantly. So if you, if you swipe across the screen and you kill around 12 or 13 of them, you get really 12 micropayments uh, in an instant. So it is a fantastic speed we, we, <laughs> we, we have here with, with the Hashgraph. Nobody else can, 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 give, the, can give us this sort of uh, applications. So this is why it's so exciting. Totally. And then uh, I guess also too, Nick, um, another thing I think is interesting about hashhash.info is, um, so how do you also put this together? I mean, the mainnet is obviously launched, but it's not open for open access. Um, obviously, folks are looking to develop on top of uh, Hedera, but you know, you've been able to kind of put something out there already, push it out to the market before kind of open access. So uh, do you mind kind of uh, giving some perspectives on that? The SDK. Uh, the SDK has been available since late December. Actually, the SDK has been uh, available since day number one um, uh, uh, hackathon, Hedera uh, 18. Yeah. And uh, from late November or December, I don't exactly remember, you could start uh, talking to the test nets from your home. Yep. And to the mainnet too. Some features of the SDK uh, didn't work with the mainnet, but a lot of them did work since January, January onwards. Means uh, uh, querying about accounts, getting balances, all these sort of things that have anything to do with micropayments have been working with the mainnet for quite some time. So, so you can do micropayments with the SDK. It's been always there. The test net, what it does uh, on top is that it allows you to do smart contracts. The only thing right now not available on the mainnet is smart contract functionality. But even without smart contracts, there's a lot of stuff you can do, like um, hash, hash info. <laughs> so uh, there are people that have started now realizing that uh, we don't need smart contracts to be really live <laughs> to, to start doing uh, totally. great things. And uh, I see developers doing uh, great things. For instance, there's a price prediction uh, market yep. out there, uh, age by price. Uh, yep. They're doing a fantastic job. It, it works without smart contracts. It just works. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Well, it's very exciting to see folks uh, already starting to uh, play around with test nets, but then also play around with the components that they have access to on the, mm. the main net. So. But, but yeah. smart contracts are coming. So. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm sure that we're going to talk a little bit later about this stuff today. T totally. Well, uh, hey, I just figured it would be great to uh, uh, you know have you on the show. Also, give the pitch on hashhash.info because you know this is one of the great things about a you know like a network in its early stages. You know, we're watching these things kind of come to life, and obviously, an important factor uh, to that will be having tools that enable you to kind of look over the network, see what's going on. We've obviously seen this before with the Bitcoin blockchain, 
We've also seen this uh, emerge with ETH, uh, Ethereum, with Etherscan, etc. So I think these are really great tools that kind of help give us a broader perspective. So uh, I'm really excited to have you on. Oh, so, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. <laughs> so Nick, I got a question to ask you. Go. All right. How excited were you for uh, Hedera Consensus Service uh, announcement that came out this week? Oh man, this this, this is stuff. Seriously, uh, I, I, I was expecting something big to be announced, uh, but this is probably the biggest thing that that we could ever. I mean, it, it, it takes time for people to realize what this thing does. Uh, it, it takes me a lot of time to realize what it does, and every day I discover new things. So, so the biggest thing to, is something that's that's more of a personal opinion. I'm not a big fan of smart contracts. I've never been a fan <laughs> of them. Yeah. Right? Because uh, you you are you you have to work with an inferior language. Yep. With an inferior <laughs> virtual machine. Yep. Uh, to do, I don't know, inferior workflows <laughs> and, and, and try to figure out a, a semantics that uh, it's difficult to, to understand. Um, yep. um, solidity is, um, I'm, I'm not trying to, 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 to talk it down or something like that. It's, it's, it's a substantial piece of work, but uh, uh, it's nowhere near a, a, a mature programming language. It's, it's more like assembly with a little bit of a syntactic sugar. <laughs> so things go really, really wrong. Yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of a smart contract. Now, Hedera Consensus Service allows you to do things without smart right. contract. And be able to take advantage of some of the native uh, you know, consensus uh, features or, or basically take advantage of like uh, uh, the features of Hedera and the con Hashgraph consensus algorithm uh, natively. Absolutely, absolutely. So, 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 so Hedera, what what they did here is they they really exposed to to us the the uh, the, the core layer of 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 Hedera Hashgraph. So, so we can build our own networks on top of it. We can build our own engines. We can do things that uh, 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 if we wanted to do these things before, we would have to, I don't know, invent new blockchain yep. <laughs> semantics. No, we don't have to do this anymore. Just use yeah. the service, plug and play. Totally. So uh, for the folks that are listening in here, and if you're not familiar with what uh, Nick and I are talking about, so this past week, uh, Hedera announced their Hedera consensus services, uh, or I guess the Hedera consensus service API which is essentially a new service being added uh, to the Hedera platform that essentially allows developers to gain access to the Hashgraph consensus algorithm and be able to leverage it natively within you know, their own applications or potentially leverage it if they're running on another ledger. So uh, a good visual to help kind of uh, understand this all, I'm just gonna bounce back here to the uh, PowerPoint deck here is more or less you have the you know the three services that we've you know everyone's familiar with uh hedera which they've announced before the cryptocurrency service smart contracts and file service but now the consensus service is being added on as a fourth layer but one of the things that uh hedera really kind of emphasized um you know with this uh announcement is that just implicit to hedera as a whole um, and what really helps uh, the ledger stand out from other competitors and also provides you know, benefits for people um, building on top of it is basically access to timestamping and then also the ability to have revocation uh, types of services and more or less take advantage of a lot of the great benefits that come from the uh, Hashgraph consensus algorithm, which many are already aware is you know, fast, fair, and secure fast, you know, high volume of uh, throughput, uh, secure, you know, it has uh, uh, a Byzantine fault tolerant uh, properties associated with it and FAIR with, by implementing the timestamps enables for a more, uh, uh, you know, fair approach to, uh, you know, ordering of transactions, which you don't necessarily see in blockchain um, based uh, like networks. So, yeah, so Hedera announced this uh, uh, service this past week. I'm just going to go back to the browser here. 
And they also obviously published like a white paper to go along with it to kind of articulate all those concepts. One thing that should, you know, call out here, and I think it's pretty interesting too, is that the authors of the white paper and kind of uh, the concept of uh, Hedera Consensus Service is none other than, you know, uh, Dr. Lehman Baird, and then uh, Don Thibault, who's a uh, principal product manager for Hedera Hashgraph. But I think it's also noteworthy is uh, Brian Gross, who's a product manager from IBM, also made contributions to this white paper. So I think it's kind of exciting to see that uh, Hedera is kind of branching out as far as um, getting others to kind of contribute to concepts and ideas uh, that can be implemented into services on the Hedera Hashgraph like network. And uh, yeah, then there was uh, obviously a live stream that took place this past week where Lehman kind of, uh, you know, gave a walkthrough of uh, the services and then also um, was joined by Brian to talk about some of the new features or, or one of the uh, cool features that um, the HCS services um, offer um, is basically, uh, well, let's maybe just take a quick step back here. Um, so one of the features that the Hedera consensus services essentially offer is that it allows people that might be running other ledgers to essentially tap into Hedera and take advantage of you know the consensus mechanisms. So take advantage of uh, you know time stamping, you know fair ordering, and uh, basically can send messages to Hedera in a uh, whatever format they want to take, whether it's encrypted or you know make it completely open. And then once you know that message is sent out, put into order, then they can ultimately take that kind of proof that that transaction had taken place and then communicate it back to the private network and then ultimately you know maintain it within you know that private ledger that that they're using and this is uh, pretty notable because uh, folks that are um, involved with like blockchain and industry might know that um, when it comes to enterprise like use cases for uh, DLT um, you know you know, people are still hesitant about building on top of public ledgers. So as a result, there's been widespread uh, adoption of these private ledgers. In particularly, a lot of folks have adopted the toolkits uh, from Hyperledger to build their own networks. Uh, but one thing that's always of concern is, um, although you're you're transacting with trusted, you know, counterparts, um, you know, there's still you know issues that can come up over having leader-based systems. Uh, you know, security, and then even when it comes to like ordering of transactions. So by offering up this service and leveraging the trust that you have within a public network like Hedera, uh, basically anyone that's building into these private networks can get the best of both worlds. Um, and what's more importantly, and what uh, man, I mean, I'm sorry, what Lehman and uh, Brian uh, covered during their, their live stream um, was the fact that now Hedera, the HCS services will essentially be one of the kind of components that you can plug, you know, you can basically pull from um, when you're building out your, your Hyperledger network. Um, so basically you can swap out uh, the, you know, the Hyperledger fabric uh, ordering services and basically leverage, you know, HCS as your ordering service and basically have that plugged into your network. And uh, I think this is really exciting because this is a just incredible bridge that enables people that are doing stuff in private ledgers to then also do stuff in public ledgers, which is already a noteworthy accomplishment, but they're able to do it into uh, the Hedera public network, um, which is ultimately helping to bridge private versus public closer together and doing it on top of Hedera. Now this, we should note, has been around for a bit. Um, you know, Ethereum had something similar, had a similar, uh, you know, uh, offering and services that you could, you know, incorporate into uh, Hyperledger Fabric. But I think it's just really noteworthy that this is already being uh, considered and, uh, you know, potentially being featured within uh, Hyperledger. So uh, very exciting development. Uh, I'm sure this is probably going over um, people's heads as, as we're talking about it. But uh, I think this is a, um, you know, 
going to be a, a good thing in the long run and also going to be helping out other enterprises uh, to start, you know, getting started on, on Hedera. And to just help to kind of put things into perspective, this uh, uh, graphic that I have over here basically describes how, um, you know, HCS can be kind of incorporated into, uh, you know, a private ledger like uh, Hyperledger Fabric. And yeah, like, more or less, I think you should go check out, you know, this information. Um, I've put links down below. Really take take some time to read through the uh, the white paper. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to stay posted for further developments. So, Nick, I know I kind of just gave my plug there because I wanted to give people, like, the context that we're talking about. So I didn't mean to kind of cut you off before, but, uh, you know, just your perspectives, uh, like, on this. Uh, I believe, okay, the, the deal with Hyperledger is... is, is, is... It's very big. So um, it's not only about private uh, ledgers. It's a, you can do public ledgers too. Uh, now it's all about what important aspect here is to to keep state uh, in sync. So me and you, we're playing here a very very high speed game, a first person shooter, uh, and we don't want to write this stuff in a uh, in a smart contract. We're gonna write it in a real programming environment like Unity 3D. It's gonna be a very fast game, and we need to decide where we're gonna put the state, um, uh, the state of the game. Uh, so if we decide to put the state uh, of the game in uh, uh, a blockchain, then our game will be quite slow. But if we decide to handle the state ourselves, then uh, I'm going to have my state in my database. You're going to have the state, a copy of the state in your database. And then we have to decide um, uh, who is uh, telling the truth when these states don't match anymore. This is now where Hedera Consensus uh, uh, Service uh, will help us to determine who is the liar <laughs> when, when, when when somebody's claiming a win. Uh, the Hyperledger framework now will help us really set up this whole um, uh, infrastructure because it, uh, it does uh, take a little bit of uh, an effort to, to link databases, link state, uh, monitor things. So you don't have to do it all uh, by yourself when you start running your own ledgers. So Hyperledger is there to bootstrap you very quickly. And uh, uh, the consensus service simply allows us to handle our state ourselves we can have it publicly we can have it private it, it, it doesn't matter but 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 what's important is that the uh, the hedera ledger will be there for an external auditor to check whether i win the trophy or whether you win the trophy when we are when we are having a dispute yeah totally and then i i think the other thing that i think is really exciting and uh ties into what people are really excited about dlts is that this is also going to be a really good tool for like audit logs. Um, so if I'm transmitting, you know, information, you know, between ourselves, if I need to kind of prove that, like, I sent this to you at the specific time, uh, you know, this is where, you know, people are really excited about DLT and the property that, that uh, properties that they offer. But more importantly, I might be transmitting you information that I need to keep private. I don't want other people to see. I don't want people Correct. to see that you and I transacted with each other, but I need to have that trust that it exists. So as a result, you know, having a service like this, I can at least post that there was a proof that you and I had a transaction, but then we can keep it within our own private network, um, you know, that, uh, uh, that we can, um, um, you know, we can retain the information ourselves without having to broadcast it like publicly. And I know that this is especially important when you come into areas of law and financial services where just people want to keep things relatively like private. They want, you know, that public trust, but you know, they want that trust that the, you know, in, in, in record that something occurred, but at the same time too, they don't need to broadcast like, Hey, I, I sold you a hundred million shares. Um, so it's it's good from that front, and then I, I guess Nick, because you're way more um, you know have more of the technical background than myself, uh, but I guess how do you also look at this in perspective to like zero knowledge like proofs? Because I know that's one thing that people were really excited about, and then when you saw um, J.P. Morgan through the uh, Quorum blockchain adopt zero knowledge proofs within their um, you know Quorum blockchain. Um, part of the reason they did that was because they wanted to have it such that there was a proof that something took place, but yet was able to have that uh, privacy 
uh, to you know to the details of the transaction. Could you see something? Absolutely. You, you yeah. see, just let me backtrack here. There, there are places where, 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 where solidity in a public state uh, makes sense. But yeah. in many of our transactions here, especially in the informal world, uh, uh, it does make sense to keep things uh, uh, in a public uh, uh, database to, 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 to prove that you took some action or you you you, you perform, perform some transaction because yeah of course it's, it's about privacy and most of the time you, you don't really need to to have the state uh, to to prove that you did something all you need is just of the state and somebody to, to put a transplant on it <laughs> and give you a sequence in your bag to, to yeah. have an external outer there. Really uh, 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 Run it himself to 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 realize that you are that you are speaking the truth. Yep. Uh, you don't have to run it for them. They can it. They can run it themselves. If you have a mirror node, uh, my understanding is that the mirror node can receive all the gossip from uh, from the nodes, it, and it also can uh, uh, apply the Hashgraph algorithm to the transactions to determine the truth. It's not. Somebody else had to tell the mirror yep. node. This guy is telling the truth. The mirror node yep. can figure it out. Totally, that, that is telling the truth. Yeah. Hey Nick, so I don't mean to jump in here. It's just uh, we're getting a little bit of the the audio uh, chirping in and out, but it's okay. It'll it'll, it'll adjust itself. But uh, I think exactly to your point too. It always like there's always when it comes to DLT too. One size doesn't fit all. I mean, it comes down to the use case that you're looking to apply. Um, having information out there in the public is good for some cases, but then also can be, you know, have some adverse effects to it. Uh, and when you're a big enterprise looking to build on top of one of these tools, like you want to make sure that, you know, the, the, whatever the infrastructure you're building on is agile to meet those uh, needs. So these are, I think we're just going to keep on reiterating the point that this is a really good step in the right direction and an awesome new service that they're that they're looking to launch. But the one question I do have to ask, and this has been one thing that always runs all along with the Hedera folks is, great idea, totally on board, I'm really excited. Question is, when is it gonna be like launched? Did you hear any perspectives on that? Okay. Uh, oh, I think your your audio might have- uh, be... Let me jump out and come back in and ask. Oh, okay. All right, so folks, uh, Nick's just gonna uh, step away here real quick. Um, so uh, so I'll just kind of round things out. So long story short, Hedera Consensus Services, check it out, really exciting development. All right, so we're gonna move along here. And uh, the next topic we're gonna cover is some thoughts, as it respects on the Libra project or the Libra network which uh, folks that might not be familiar with is the uh, network uh, or I guess DLT network that's uh, recently been announced uh, by, well, essentially Facebook was one of the sponsors of it. And um, yeah, so, so like we said, Libra uh, network that's being put out there looking to address uh, a whole slew of different use cases and to just help to kind of summarize it because I really don't want to take the time to just kind of go through all the different details about Libra because let's just face it, this past week there's been countless amounts of information out there talking about it, different people giving perspectives on it. On it. I thought that this graphic right over here did a really good job at kind of just boiling down all the different things you need to kind of consider um, with Libra. More or less, it's a now. This article here is calling it a stable coin with value linked to a basket of currencies, and it's expected to launch at some point in 2020. I think one thing we should maybe just note is that although they're calling it a stable coin, it's not necessarily a stable coin that, as far as what mainstream uh, uh, folks are familiar with, with it being pegged one to one with a specific currency. Basically, they're taking a basket of currencies, putting it together, and then deriving a value from it. In a lot of ways, this is very similar to like kind of um, some types of exchange traded funds where essentially, uh, or even like some money market funds where they're basically pulling 
uh, liquid assets to come up with a price that's very close to, you know, a U.S. Uh, like a large uh, currency like the you know like the U.S. dollars. Um, in the chat there, uh, Phil, uh, thanks for pointing that out. Basically, special uh, drawing rights. Um, so, yeah, more or less, uh, it's basically a going to be a cryptocurrency of some nature that's backed by you know something that has a stable value. Got it. Any folks that follow Bitcoin all knows that it's subjected to you know price volatility, and you know there's uh, obviously that can also be an hindrance to like adoption where people are afraid, hey, if I put my money in here, yeah, I can go up in price, but then there's always the risk that it can go down. So I think this is really good, not only just Libra, but like a lot of these projects out there that are doing stable coins uh, to come about, you know, basically uh, eliminating the speculation piece and just keeping like a stable price. Um, we said before, Libra, they're, you know, they're going to be backed by this uh, group of currencies, but also too, they're going to be using a collective of different bank deposits um, to basically secure, um, you know, that collateral. Um, and basically, they're only going to be putting those funds into, quote, quote, reputable institutions, um, which uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get into a little bit about my personal viewpoints on, on that. And then on top of it, Libra is going to be open source. Basically, they're going to start first with a public permission blockchain meaning only specific parties are allowed to kind of like run nodes on top of it. But then I guess they're going to eventually focus on being permissionless blockchain like over time. So we'll have to see how that kind of develops there. And then Libra is going to be governed as a Swiss not-for-profit or going to be the Libra Association. And then it's going to start first with 29 founding members. Um, each of those had to put in a uh, certain amount of capital uh, to basically become a... Uh, a you know, an association member. And then as a result, they'll be running nodes. There's going to be associated costs. From what we've gathered and in other information about Libra, I guess also those those association members will be receiving another token separate from the Libra stablecoin, which will actually be a security to basically um, kind of compensate them for, uh, you know, their kind of contributions to the network. Um, so they won't be necessarily collecting transaction fees. Now, this is just what I'm gathering right now, but they'll be receiving this kind of like investment security that they could eventually, uh, you know, trade in, you know, the open markets in the future. And then the other thing is, is that uh, transactions are going to be mostly anonymous. Um, so basically, there's going to be some degree of anonymity on the networks, but at the same time, too, given that this is a broad network, um, in de dealing with value transfer, there's going to have to be some needs for KYC, um, identity verification um, at the kind of on and off ramps uh, onto the network. Uh, but a big thing is, is that the Asso Libra Association will not hold personal data. And then also those members that will be building on top of the network, um, you know, they'll be bound to their own privacy policies. And entities such as like Facebook has come out to say that they're going to keep whatever is associated with Libra network, or in their case, they created an entity called Cala Libra, will be kept separate from that of the Facebook network to you know, diminish um, any concerns over you know, privacy. As we're all aware, Facebook has had some small issues in the past with that. So major takeaways here, I have it on the screen. Libra's association of 28 partners that were originally announced, eventually is gonna be 100. Um, some very noteworthy institutions a part of it. Um, just my personal viewpoints, I think it's when you look at the payment space, uh, those are some pretty notable names. Um, especially not only are they gonna be contributing to the governance of the network, but also to these first association members will likely be some of the first people onto the network beginning to develop on it. And uh, I just think it's pretty noteworthy that these are also some very kind of, um, let's call it like, uh, you know, some of the major tech giants or some of these new emerging tech companies. And I think that they're in much better position to take the risk in implementing a new payment rail as opposed to like a traditional Fortune 500 company that has, you know, long history and reputation at play um, where they're going to be much more slower to implement. Like, for example, Uber is more likely to enable Libra-based payments 
as opposed to, let's say, like, a, I don't know, like a Delta Airlines. I don't know. I'm just making that up. Um, another thing to point out, no banks are involved. We have payment processors, but no banks. And from what we understand, the reason why that there was no banks was, I guess, uh, as part of putting together, um, you know, the network, the Facebook and their, uh, you know, their cohort reached out to banks to ask them if they were interested. But then I guess some of the banks were, were kind of hesitant to be a part of it. Some of the partially because they look at it as competition. Also, some of them are having their own projects, most notably JP Morgan Chase. So as a result, uh, no banks were a part of this. Now we'll have to see if this is a good thing or a bad thing. In some cases, this could be a good thing because you're not bringing the banks in. So as a result, uh, you know, there's going to be less of kind of the, uh, you know, risk that banking regulations are going to start to apply to this. Uh, but at the same time, too, banks are always going to be pretty important partners. As, um, part of that is because, as we noted before, Facebook's ultimately going to, uh, I mean, sorry, got to be careful. Libra is ultimately going to be putting, um, they're going to be receiving collateral and they're going to need to park it somewhere secure. So it's going to be very critical for them to have the banks on board to support it. Now, I'll tell you, basically what Libra was going to eventually need to have is what's known as an FBO account for benefit of other account, which is essentially like a custody account at financial institutions. And I'll tell you this, just knowing from my own personal experience from industry, crypto companies opening up FBO accounts are by far one of the hardest things to do. And especially if we're talking about billions of dollars going in there and then ultimately collateral to support a major network like a Libra. All I have to say is, good luck, Libra. This is going to be a very long journey for you because there is a whole slew of factors that have to be considered as part of that, especially on KYC and AML. And an entity like a bank that's holding those securities, but at the same time, too, they're going to be bound by you know various global financial crimes regulations as a whole part of that. They're going to ultimately you know, I'm really skeptical of how that's going to work out at this scale. Uh, it makes sense for smaller stable coins where a smaller regional bank can take the risk of taking that on. But at this scale, if they're looking for large, reputable institutions, I'm just skeptical how that's going to really, like, you know, pan out with them being able to open up an accounts. So moving off of that topic, uh, one other thing people should note was that, uh, you know, there was privacy and openness uh, baked into the release. Um, clearly, we all know Facebook's had some issues with that, so I think it's very fair for people to have a lot of skepticism over um, you know how privacy is going to be handled on the network. So, uh, and also how other uh, entities that are going to be involved with uh, Libra are going to handle it. So, we'll be very curious to see how that pans out. And then, lastly, Facebook is obviously rolling the dice here on regulations as a result uh, about. Um, launching this network, as we mentioned before, they don't necessarily have the greatest reputation right now as it stands with different global like regulators. And no sooner was this announced, you saw pretty much every single central bank and every single global uh, authority come out to, uh, <laughs> you know, voice their views as it relates to uh, Libra and also Facebook uh, involvement uh, in this. Uh, so, it's going to be very interesting to see how this pans out and. I, I don't know. I'm going to just, this is my personal opinion here. I'm really curious. They're saying that it's going to launch in 2020. I'm skeptical on that. I, I'm almost doubtful that this can even really uh, get off the ground. And personally, too, when I found out that Facebook was even considering a cryptocurrency, my personal view is this is a last stand uh, or those that are, you know, here in the U.S. In a lot of ways, I looked at Facebook's cryptocurrency is kind of like their last run of the Alamo, if people are familiar with that reference, where basically this is like kind of the last move that Facebook can make to, in order to sustain themselves as a business. Because uh, if anyone read the George Gilder, um, you know, Life After Google, you'll know that businesses that are solely baked on or based on uh, ad revenue models um, and basically leveraging their users' data to then, you know, sell to advertisers is going to be dead in the long run. Uh, they don't ultimately have a product at the end of the day. So I think Facebook recognized this and then basically looking for other channels to kind of keep themselves afloat. So that's why they wanted to, to crypto. But I think it was noteworthy when we actually found out about Libra that it's not just purely just Facebook doing it. They're doing it with this larger 
uh, you know, group of entities uh, to roll it out. Still no, uh, you know, perspective on how they're going to actually turn a profit from this and how they're going to actually benefit. But it's a very ambitious and bold undertaking that I think it's worthwhile for us to talk about and call out as every other person in the media did too. Hey, keep in mind, I run a YouTube channel and I do want to help make sure my uh, videos uh, appear in the trending topics. So I thought it was worthwhile to cover this. But um, just going along here too, the reason why it's even worthwhile for us talking about this and for us to even waste our breath on this, it's just really what it boils down to is the scale that Facebook has. They have just an insane amount of users on their platforms already. They already have payments built in, as we see on Instagram, you know, Facebook Messenger, and also on WhatsApp. So by then creating a new payment rail to then support all those, it's going to be very, very interesting just given the scale. Listen, Facebook has 2.7 billion users worldwide, which is more than the entire populations of like India and China combined. So even if they can get a small portion of that, to be using like the Libra currency, it's going to be pretty huge. So I think I'm going to put aside, you know, the tech considerations. I'm going to put aside, you know, Facebook as an entity doing this. It's just the scale that they have. If they can even capture one percent of it, it's very noteworthy. And let's just face it, guys, it's a lot bigger than a lot of other, you know, DLT networks that are out there today. Personally, I also think too, if anyone that's following uh, Ripple or XLM or Stellar's should be kind of uh, afraid because there's a lot of similarities and a lot of parallels between Libra versus, you know, like those networks. So, I listen, I, I, I there's a lot that we can, you know, obviously cover here, but I just wanted to take some time to just note that this is obviously something we want to keep a close eye on, see how it develops. It could potentially be a good thing overall for DLT as a is a great way to introduce mainstream uh, to it. And also, as I told you before about the scale and user adoption, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of potentials here. Uh, so I went over uh, some slides there from uh, CV Insights that kind of helped to inform me on uh, discussions on this topic. Uh, but there's also some really good resources out there for anyone that has a subscription to the FT. Um, there's this uh, basically a Libra fact sheet um, that the Financial Times has put together to kind of go through some of the various aspects of the Libra network while also providing their own perspectives on this. So I definitely recommend you check that out. Uh, let me pop this in the uh, chat channels because this is behind a paywall, but someone on Reddit was able to um, post this on a public site so you can check it out. Uh, but this is uh, you know some good information. So. You might be saying, or at this point, you're probably sick and tired of me talking about Libra, um, which is fair. And you might be saying, hey, Gossip Guy, what the heck does this mean now to Hedera? And Nick, I think this is the time. I, I've kind of gotten off my soapbox here, so feel free to chime in here. So obviously, the first thing folks in the community you know, were, were, were quick to react to is you know, just giving their own perspectives on how does Libra compare to Hashgraph. And let me just say, my personal humble opinion, I don't think that there's comparisons. Yes, there's some things that are similar. Yes, there's some use cases that, that are um, both Hedera and, and Libra um, are gonna potentially be going after, but I really don't think that there's comparisons. I really think that Hedera's got a bright future on the enterprise front. And I really think that Libra's gonna really only build itself within the kind of B2C type of space. Given that, there, there's definitely opportunities for both of these networks to coexist. And uh, I think it's also good too, where you have something big like Libra come in, that it also brings, you know, kind of uh, broader attention to DLT overall. And anyone with the right, you know, right knowledge if they become exposed to Hedera, they'll come to realize, you know, a lot of the, you know, the great properties um, about the network, and uh, especially when open access is made available, which is obviously a very important milestone, they'll be able to then also begin to use and begin to develop on top of the platform. So I, I don't know, Nick, if you had any other uh, like thoughts on like on that. 
we, we like to compare Libra, but it's not comparable. Uh, I, didn't it's, it's, I mean, it's consensus as governance. Uh, and Libra, what it did is uh, figured out that, okay, the governance model is not bad. Let's do that. But, um, still, <laughs> so, 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 so I've gotten halfway to where uh, their hard graph is. But the rest of it, they cannot have it. Yeah. Hey, 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 Nick, I'm really sorry. Uh, you're breaking up a little bit there. Uh, okay, got... let, 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 let me come back in a second again. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, this is always a tough thing with running these uh, live streams. You never know the internet connections. There's a lot of variables uh, that are out there. But, you know, to Nick's point there, um, you know, when you get to performance, there's not you know, comparisons uh, there. And then also when you get to ordering of transactions, et cetera. Now granted, those are all technical, but the one thing that uh, I, I, I know people were, oh, hey, welcome back, Nick. I'm back in, sorry, is that okay. better now? Yeah, yeah, that was better. Okay, I, I didn't hear what you were saying. Oh, I, was, I, I was just kind of quickly recapping what I could make mm -hmm. out from, from what you were saying uh, mm -hmm. about kind of the, some of the technical comparisons uh, to, to, uh, between Libra and uh, Hedera. There is also a lot of uh, uh, interesting information if you if we go to Telegram main chat. A lot mm -hmm. of people have very good comparisons there. Uh, some good uh, uh, pieces I've read from Johnny Hush uh, uh, comparing the two technologies. And really, uh, comparing the two of them is, is, is not doing uh, 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 us any favors because it's just not comparable. It's not comparable. Uh, uh, Libra has the uh, ability to push it out to, to the masses. The, the, the important thing is that they do also have things like WhatsApp. Now imagine uh, Facebook uh, rolls it out on WhatsApp and uh, a, a, a wallet on WhatsApp and uh, billions of users now have a wallet installed uh, on their desktops without uh, knowing it. Uh, yes, they do have this power. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, but they do not have the... the, the the thing that makes a DLT a DLT here. <laughs> totally. Now, Nick, I got another question to ask you because this is a kind of segue into, well, still on this Libra topic, but a segue to another item I wanted to kind of bring up and obviously get your thoughts on. So the, uh, uh, I guess the Libra Association, and let me just pull up a quick graphic here just to refer to it. So the uh, Libra Association here, 29 uh, founding members, uh, trusted institutions, uh, eventually moving up to 100. Uh, what that kind of seems familiar. Like, I feel like I have uh, might have seen that uh, yeah. before. Yes. Uh, does, does that look similar to the, uh, the governance council for Hedera? It, it's what I've been just, just saying. It, it, it's, it's the same. It's really the same. It's the same. Right. Now, okay, well, I'm going to just, regardless from holding back, so let's just, just dive into this. So then, obviously, with that being said, uh, the media was really quick to comment on the fact that there was uh, some things that were unusually, like, you know, comparable to, uh, to Hedera. And there was this article that was published on CCN, which seems to be the route or the anchor article that was published that a lot of these other crypto networks are posting Libra's dirty secret blockchain firm claims Facebook stole its crypto model. And basically this goes into the fact that uh, there's a lot of similar comparisons to the governance model for, uh, for Hedera. And then as a result, Hedera went as far as expressing this by taking out a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal um, yesterday, uh, so Saturday, to say, thank you, Facebook Libra. Imitation is in sincerest form of flattery. And then basically like a link to uh, Hedera. And then it's just basically this article talks about drawing the comparisons to the governance network for Hedera. And um, I'm going to kind of make sure to disclose this here. This is my opinion. Um, and Nick, you know, obviously jump in here. But governance is not a proprietary aspect to a network. And let's just face it. Mm -hmm. Let's just face it. I'm going to just be very uh, straight here. This is Libra coming out saying this. I can tell you of already five other networks that are working in stealth mode right now that are adopting a similar model to Hedera. Mm. And even one can argue that they had a model even before Hedera was out. Governance is not a proprietary, like a proprietary concept. It's just good practice. Like this is 
a great idea to have you know basically don't leave it you know uh you know token based voting or, i mean i'm sorry don't have like on-chain voting or you, you know just leave it up for whoever owns the most amount of tokens to you know like run the show create a separate entity to then govern it you know the uh the network not in a you know like a non-for-profit association but actually have people with real stake in the game to ensure that they provide governance over the network it's no different than a board of directors this is yes. like i said it's i i don't think that this is proprietary um to draw parallels that like hey libra stole it from 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 facebook i'm sure they had a conversation where hedera went in and said hey this is our governance model what do you think about it and then probably someone in the back room says hey that's a really good idea we're working on something right now maybe we can can do it now i would say that if there was a the one-off chance that some that one of libra's code is taking stuff from hedera that's blatant piracy blatant you know uh um uh, you know breach of you know like uh, the you know the patent that's in place like that's something i i think it's fair to make claims against but governance like come on guys this is not something this is something you should be proud of that you setting this tone and being the thought leader in the space of coming up with like this idea that makes sense for public networks to you know to follow i i think hedera is proud here <laughs> yeah uh, and this is what the what the art is saying. Uh, thank you for imitating us. So uh, it, it is actually a flattery, isn't it? I, uh, yeah, definitely. It, it, I think it's noteworthy. I don't want to take anything away from the Hedera team on any of this stuff. That they've been busting their butts off. Uh, but... It, 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 it helps us. It helps us uh, uh, spread out the word, definitely, because uh, people recognize the name Facebook. Uh, but they have a chance to see that uh, Hedera is doing something there as well. Uh, my only worry is to make sure that uh, 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 let people understand that it's not the same. Hedera here is superior to yeah. what uh, Facebook is proposing. My problem is that people rarely, if you go out now and try to explain the facts about consensus, people rarely by and on, on facts, they don't care about facts much. So, so there's a little bit of a risk <laughs> to yeah. to to giving too much to to Facebook. So yeah, and then at the same time too, there's always the risk that anyone that Hedera is going to go out and speak with and share like the concepts, like someone's going to there's going to be tons of copycats to follow. I think that's mm -hmm. that goes without saying that people are going to be borrowing from this. And I also think, you know, so some uh, another thing that people had brought up in the community is that, hey, this wouldn't be so bad if at least, you know, Libra gave some credit to like Hedera, right? Now we could really dispute whether or not like, did that really take place? Did they really, you know, do that? Were they under NDA, et cetera? But I think the one thing to just note is that, listen, I'm sure they would be able to give credits to it and give an opinion, but obviously stands to say that if you have something that's actually publicly launched and out there and no longer like actually like theory it makes a stronger case for someone to acknowledge it to see it actually in practice as opposed to right now all this stuff is just on paper and yeah conceptually they're getting you know council members on board but yeah. it's not actually out there in the wild yet i i don't think i don't think hadira needs credit from anybody so <laughs> <laughs> listen so, so. Yeah. Internet Explorer 6 didn't give any credit to Firefox. Firefox yeah. took over because yeah. it was simply a better technology. So, Listen, Hedera, you guys kick butt. We're all here to support you. But uh, yeah, I just think it's better to just kind of move on. Keep focus on, on open access. Push out awesome products. Now, I know it's like it's, you know, people always want to, uh, uh, you know, kind of speak for themselves uh, on things. But uh but still, I'm sure uh, within time, uh, you know, people will realize, who, you know, who the real winner is. But at the same time, too, you have a one year advantage over like Libra and any other people that pop up. Who, who knows? What if Google comes out with like their own like, you know, network at once uh, Libra, you know, has, has been announced. Right. Um, use that 12 month advantage to your you know, to your benefit. And then also the other thing is, is that keep in mind, as we covered before, this is a long ass journey for uh for 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 libra facebook and all those other entities a part of it like i told you before the fbo account that they're going to set up good luck getting that started like good luck getting you know 
a group of institutions agree to take on that as collateral and take on that risk. Good luck getting through all the global regulators. You saw India already come out to say, we, we want to reiterate that we uh, don't support cryptocurrencies, right? Like, I, I just, one of those things is just don't be reactionary. Just focus on the priorities, get the products out, get people on board, and let everything else speak for itself. So, <laughs> I know uh, uh, there's starting to be a buzz in the, in the chat there. But uh, before we just part here, um, Nick, thumbs up. Nick, thumbs up or thumbs down on the uh, 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 full paper ad in the uh, Wall Street Journal? Um, I'm sitting on the fence on this one. <laughs> no, no comment. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I, again, uh, it, it, it's, it's good that, that, that people will hear about Hedera Hushcraft and they will check it out. Uh, but again, we need to make sure to to let everybody understand that these two things are not comparable. So uh, uh, we may have allowed a little bit of Facebook to compare themselves to, to what we are doing here, <laughs> uh, 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 but they don't have the consensus. And I don't know uh, 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 how to uh, communicate that uh, to, to, to a wider audience who doesn't understand much about what consensus is. So, so we, 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 will, we will need a little bit of help from the community to, to find a little bit uh, better non-technical ways of um, uh, communicating why consensus is so important and why the way Hedera does it is so fast and fair. <laughs> so people don't understand what uh, Byzantine full tolerance is and things like that. They, they need simpler messages. So we need to work on these simpler messages. Yeah. Because I'm trying to, to, to explain to, to, to my business uh, associates a little bit what, what all this is and uh, like shaking their head. And, Nick, what are you on? Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, and also the other thing too, is I think Libra is one benefit of this is that it's Facebook. It lives in everyone's lives. This is going to also, I know people all over the internet were, were talking about this. Um, you know, I'm a little skeptical on the theory, but I think at, at its root, it makes sense is that, you know, also too, people are going to be a little bit more inclined to learn about crypto and learn about the components of it. When they at least know, like, hey, this uh, this application that I use on a day to day basis um, is uh, uh, um, coming about. So let me educate myself and learn more about it. Um, yes, but but it's not only crypto. This is not, uh, I, I, and this is what this uh, uh, Hedera consensus service now is about. It's not only about crypto. It's about me and you trying to keep a, a, a data state in sync, a database in sync. Uh, it was not very easy before but with this service it is going to be an easy task to achieve and it has nothing to do with crypto per currency or payment so it's it's really about syncing states yeah. and proving that they're they're in sync this is a big thing really totally all right i think we've covered this topic in depth uh i think this would be we've done our service to uh say libra so it can get picked up in uh the trending for 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 youtube uh we got some other topics we want to cover uh so we'll move off this um so yeah hopefully it didn't offend anyone like i said these are all my personal opinions and views everything's welcome we've had a very dis healthy chat going on in uh uh you know the live stream chat there um also too i figure this is a good plug if you uh find this uh live stream to be helpful and informative make sure to smash that like button or if you disagree with me on any of these views, I totally welcome you to also put a thumbs down. I'm totally uh, willing to take that on. Okay, so uh, I think we got to move on some other uh, topics here, Nick. Um, so more importantly, let's get back to the good stuff. Let's get back to the stuff that actually is where we're, what we're all here for. Community testing program and updates on uh, open access. So just in the interest of time here, I'm going to be kind of quick because I want to kind of turn things over to you, Nick. Um, so people, if you're new um, here, uh, as you're aware, Hedera uh, back in May announced their community testing program, um, which is basically uh, phase two of the community testing program that's enabling uh, people to basically uh, test the, uh, the mainnet and also earn HBARs in doing so. And more or less, I look at this in a lot of ways as kind of like user acceptance testing that you might see in the enterprises where 
they want people to get in there actually test things out and then they can also see um you know how the the network performs against that and then also uh you know collect feedback and consider it as a uh you know um incorporate different things into uh the product um another kind of interesting development so since i've been off from doing my regular live streams here one cool thing i thought was noteworthy to point out came out in june uh 12th earlier this month was uh hedera opening up um a more a larger allocation uh to developers um to run specific tests uh, on top of the uh, the mainnet, so it's a developer mainnet program, and basically listed out like a whole slew of uh, uh, different awards uh, that uh, d developers can earn in H bars um, by participating in it. Um, I think this is a great move. You know, obviously gets people more excited and interested in it. Question to you, Nick: Were you have you uh, participated in this? Uh not this one, but okay. is this the one, uh, because I'm looking at this at a very small screen, is this the one where Hedera announced a few rewards for particular groups of uh, apps that, um, uh, uh, yes, that must be the one. Yep. So, uh, no, not this one. Okay. No, this, not this one, no. Well, uh, yeah, you should check but, it out. <laughs> I know that it's uh, it's about 30 dApps will get up to 10K. And a couple then uh, one maybe one hundred is that right? Yep, yep. Oh, so yes. earn up to hundred k. Yes. And I think this is noteworthy uh, because the other thing is is when you're going to be running a DAP on top of the mainnet, uh, eventually you're going to need to have H bars to then pay for gas and pay for um, you know different services on the network. So it's very nice that Hedera is giving an opportunity for. DAP developers to gain access to H bars and have it allocated to them. So then this way they can ultimately leverage it. And, you know, what types. type of DAP is your tip is going to get the 100K? I mean, I, I go for a distributed exchange. So, so uh, a, a DEX? As much as people would love to see a DEX because, hey, I can easily exchange my crypto, I get it. Um, I don't think, like, let's take advantage of the properties of Hedera as opposed to. Uh, uh, of just building things that we've already seen on other like ledgers, right? Like let's build something that mm. you know can't be done on anywhere else. Um, well, the DEX is something that cannot be done anywhere else because we do have this unique property of a fairness of ordering. Yeah, so. yeah. No, no, no. I, I I hear you on that point. I meant just something that's like the like it, porting it over from another. Like yeah, you get higher performance, but it's not necessarily like a new concept per se. You know what I mean? Indeed. Yeah. So I just I think it just would be great to see someone coming up with like just conceptually something new that you might have not seen before. Or we were talking before about HCS, right? Uh, you know, the whole idea of like audit logs and having, you know, trusted auto logs, audit mm -hmm. logs and having like, you know, auditable proofs for a service. Uh, that's something I can see pretty exciting. Now, granted that it already kind of exists in, in, in Ethereum, but it hasn't necessarily caught on as much, but uh, be very interesting to see if someone pioneers that uh, on uh, Hedera. So anyway, uh, so this was an exciting program. And then the other thing uh, we should note is that the Hedera team has been, uh, looks like at this point, they're trying to do like weekly uh, live streams um, where they're just giving updates uh, on the community testing program. Also, you know, just other kind of community updates. I've left links to those uh, down below, so you can check those out if you want to stay posted on it. But um, I think the one thing I'm, I'm, I'm most curious about is just what's going on on the network overall and what we're kind of seeing from the uh, community testing program. So I guess, Nick, this is one of the main reasons why I was uh, very excited to have you on today, because as you uh, opened up at the start of this uh, episode about hashhash.info, the other thing I've noted is that you've been quite active as far as giving some perspectives on what you're seeing in the community testing program and activity on the network overall as a result. So I was just curious to kind of uh, hear your perspective on things. And uh, I guess, is there anything that you've uh, come across that uh, you think is worthwhile to, to share with everyone? 
so, so, so at the moment, you see a lot of activity. We do have a lot of uh, new subscribers. And what is uh, important, uh, I think tonight we're going to be a little bit over 9,000 accounts. Uh, sorry, account number 9,000 on Hash Hash. Yep. Uh, a few people told me, Nick, that doesn't sound like a massive number. Actually, it's not a small number. Uh, it took a little bit of um, uh, time to research what's going on with other very, very popular uh, networks out there, uh, blockchains. And one uh, place for me to, 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 to usually check how many um, uh, users there are uh, uh, in a network uh, and here's the thing, uh, users and accounts and most the networks out there like Ethereum or, or Bitcoin, it's not it's not one-to-one -one because one user in Ethereum may have hundreds of accounts. So, yep. so, so in EOS, we have, I don't know, two million accounts. But yep. if, if you go and see how many people have installed the, the main extension, you'll see that it's not really that money. So blockchains yep. are still a niche. Yeah. <laughs> A market. So, so our uh, number here uh, um, is actually uh, uh, quite good, given that uh, KSE is really, really tight. Yep. Uh, I know that there were some problems in the beginning. Uh, people managed to to <laughs> do, do duplicate accounts, uh, uh, <laughs> game the system a little bit. But, but, yeah. but thing, it's uh, this. This is why testing is for. So. Yep. <laughs> so so, uh, I, I guess Hedera is testing to see yeah. how, where, where everything works and, and it, they pause when, when they see things don't uh, they, it, uh, work, they fix it and they go back on. Yeah, yeah. And I guess on that note too, I, I don't mean to kind of uh, pour salt in any wounds there, but just let's uh, kind of get the uh, 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 facts straight because like also, uh, you know, part of when I was not doing the regular streams, I kind of missed out on this, but um, I guess for folks that are not aware, when the community testing program first opened up, uh, basically, it was noted that someone was creating a whole s slew of fake accounts and then basically using uh, their allocation of HBARs to then accumulate it into like one wallet. And it turned out that there was a, uh, a, a what was it, Nick? Like there was like, there, there was a flaw in um, people could re register their uh, cards from. Uh, yes, from, from something like these lines, yeah. yes. So yes. clearly, like a front end issue, not a back end issue. No, but, no, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yes. But uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's the most old part of KIC and uh, about registering users. It, it, nothing to do with the network, really. Yeah. And uh, surprisingly, there there are there, there are many many big big believers <laughs> who went out there and start buying uh, HBAS from from places you shouldn't go <laughs> because because it's a uh, very risky to yeah to, to get caught up in some corner scam. So yeah. But it's just, uh, it, it's one of those things that I, I, I like the blog post. It was really also good to see Hedera come out right away with the post to talk about it, addressing it front on. Only speaks very highly of the team. And I like in the post that they had, it was like, hacker is going to be hacking, right? This is crypto. This comes from a long that, world that people have like hacking. So yeah, to... right. So, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. The, I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really say hack because usually hack sounds like uh, they, a they, big they, damage thing or yeah, something. Yeah, let's take it. They, 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 uh, um, uh, they took advantage of a vulnerability. Yes, yes. And, yeah. and uh, the uh, the amount uh, that that people managed to, to gather with, 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 with this trick really uh, is, is just just well, a fraction of what's yeah. out there. Yeah, always testing because a couple of years ago, yeah. well, all our testing tokens are there, yep. they were all uh, yeah. scum. <laughs> no, and, no. And, and this is not the first time it's happened on any network, so that's why I kind of just passed over, is just like, oh, that stinks, but, you know, luckily the teams move forward from, from that, and uh, yeah, we'll also move off of it. But I got a question for you, Nick. Were you able to see that, and were you able to identify which potential wallets were the ones that the, uh, that the funds like were allocated to? Here's an interesting thing about uh, Hedera Hashgraph uh, and also about Hash Hash. Uh, you see, it is not like Etherscan where you can uh, draw conclusions and say, yeah, this guy did it. No, you cannot because these are uh, 
just balanced snapshots and not transactional snapshots. Yes, you could see some patterns if you start uh, paginating a little bit in the history, because uh, when uh, people uh, apply robots <laughs> to do the scam, you'll see that robots usually uh, uh, exhibit patterns, so they they all do the same. So a lot, many accounts start doing the same at the same time, uh, and you could recognize some of them, but again, you cannot draw conclusions. You cannot say he did it because uh, uh, you don't have a transaction uh, 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 proof here. So it will come at some point with mirror nodes, mm -hmm. but uh, not. We don't have it here yeah. in Russia at the moment. So, okay. but, but it does. It does. It does really matter because. Um, uh, as you said, this is crypto land. There was a, a trick to, to earn more edge bars. Um, question is, uh, 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 is it is, is it a big issue? It's not a big issue. So yeah. just move on. And yeah, I, I, I was just I was just curious if if, if you were able to uh, track any of that stuff down. Uh, just because um, I know we, you and I have spoken about this before, but it's like, in a way, hash hash that info could become the next chain analysis or like elliptic for for the Hedera network. So it's just I know that those guys are very vocal. Yeah. Like you know, yes, yeah, yes. in this instance, and, you don't yeah. need to, to to apply a lot of mathematics to it. I mean, yeah. you just goes down and you see that uh, in uh, uh, in late May you see people earning up to uh, 4K H bars when yeah. the cup is 200. <laughs> Something must be wrong there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, totally. so, so uh, yeah, so I guess maybe just going back to like the activity on the network. So you covered about like, and, and, and Nick also too, if I can understand that you have that one nice graphic on the uh, on the front page there that shows the, I guess the, the Y axis to the left is the number of accounts. And then I guess the Y axis on the right is the change in accounts. Which brings me a little bit to, I forgot to update this so oh, okay. it weekly. So it's not updated at this moment. So okay. it's maybe at number 9,000. So it has to it has yeah. go on. Um, but still that 9,000 is pretty noteworthy. And then hypothetically in theory, it's supposed to be one account per one user. So 9,000 people setting up accounts on Hedera. That's it's a lot. It's yeah. A lot. That, that's, I mean, it's, Pro, well, I mean, we are, not even, we are not even open access. Yeah, like I think I, it, yeah. I mean, it's it, it just uh, us testers here. Uh, uh, the floodgates haven't been opened, so yeah. it's, a, it's a very good, healthy number. Yeah. And, uh, and anybody who starts doing something, uh, uh, when I talk to them, uh, they, they, they report healthy traffic. Uh, HBAR price, for instance, yep. they go very well. Uh, hash hash also is doing quite well, so yep, uh, uh, it, it is a very strong community. So yep. So and yeah, and it also it looks like after community testing, there's been a whole slew of activities. So yep. remember, smart contracts are not uh, are not are not ready yet oh, right. for yeah. the for the open. Sorry, sorry, they are ready. But they are still uh, uh, the, uh, in the process of being deployed uh, in the mainnet, and there's uh, uh, a lot of stuff because I talk a lot uh, in this code with other developers. Uh, their applications they are mostly based on smart contracts, and they're waiting for that yep. day to 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 release the product. So you will see a lot of uh, things ported over from Ethereum, uh, new ideas. I've uh, seen somebody doing a uh, Dex. So very exciting stuff. Hold on. Uh, the... um, yeah. So then I guess Nick, before we kind of move off this, and uh, it's obviously great to kind of have your perspectives here. Um, so if I look at hash hash that info, right? Uh, if I look at the kind of quote unquote hot wallets, anything uh, interesting there that you? you like you think it's worthwhile to point out or, or, or if you have some predictions as far as um, some of these uh, wallets or? I, I see that, um, you see the, the, the top three wallets there, they are Hedera's wallet. Uh, uh, so, so 99 is the, so sorry, the account uh, of a daily timestamp. Yep. So, uh, and the rest of it is um, what I would call strong believers <laughs> in the network. Yeah. So, so um remember all these uh, uh accounts are test accounts yep uh, 
developers, I believe, could uh, earn up to 4,000 HBARs and phase one testers up to 1,000. Now yep. you will see a, a few accounts here that are a little bit above yeah. <laughs> that uh, threshold, uh, that cap. And I call them strong believers, but yeah. also hush hush is a little bit uh, uh, above the uh, 4K uh, cap. Yep. And this is because uh, I did receive a little bit of uh, help from uh, Hedera Hushcraft uh, yeah. to, to pay for uh, this, the daily scans I'm doing here because uh, it yeah. does cost. Right. Uh, it's going to cost um, you some H bars uh, as a result. Yep. So, uh, and what I did uh, when I received, uh, was it seven or eight K, I think, M maybe a bit more than that. Uh, so I allowed, if you click now on uh, on any account, yep. what you can do is you can do an instant, ba instant balance refresh on any account. So yeah. there's a small button that you click and it yeah. instantly refreshes it for you to so, see. So this, one, so this one that I just pulled up here is account mm -hmm. one, two, mm -hmm. three, two. And this mm -hmm. was an interesting one because like they've skyrocketed in, like over two hundred thousand, uh, you know, H bars there, um, in the uh, the past uh, couple of days. Uh, so I'm curious if could this be one of these, uh, you know, OTC accounts or something like that, or or could it possibly it's, be? It, it's hard. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. So yeah. maybe a bunch of people. Uh, 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 Friends of, of this account who decided to to to, to sell them as uh, yeah. their their page bars or donate, give them away. It's very difficult to say yep. what's going on. So, so yes, of course, some of them uh, 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 may be from the from the trick that was applied uh, uh, with with that main cut uh, 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 thing. But but it's, it's it's again it's hard to say what's uh, where, yeah. where, 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 where the page bars are coming from. Actually, or. You, or can I just uh, make a like a, a comment and you tell me whether or not you can get a perspective on this? A another thing I was just thinking is, is that you know when we get closer to open access, the one question that everyone always asks in the community, and uh, I'm not promoting this right now, but it's always out there. Is people always asking when exchange, right? When exchange? In theory, right? Like, wouldn't I be able <laughs> if 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 Hedera were to allocate you know some some tokens to an exchange? Because like usually. You know, as part of the listing process, you allocate like a um, a portion of tokens to them in order to promote liquidity. Wouldn't you be able to see like a big move like that to like a like a counterpart? It's it's difficult to say, but but if if I look at the SDKs, uh, I see that now for about a month or so, maybe maybe a little more. I see a lot of uh, exchange uh, 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 code uh, in, in the SDKs, T talking about um, uh, uh, um, uh, exchange rates and things like that, which um, <laughs> uh, 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 sounds like uh, the uh, uh, network is ready to be accepted by exchanges. Yeah. So my feeling is that uh, uh, Hedera is, doesn't want to go to an exchange, uh, but is rather looking for an exchange to go to yeah. Hedera. And, and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't make sense not to happen. So. Yeah. I, I, on a side note, too, just to address any speculations or anything like that, too, uh, I am wearing the name of a very popular exchange right now uh, t shirt. Let's just face the, let's just clear the waters here. By no means does that mean that there's any association between Hedera and these guys. I just happen to have this and uh, I. Typically, it's a really nice shirt, really nice fabric, and I figured, hey, I'm talking about DLT stuff, might as well just wear something that's associated with DLT, but by no means does me wearing a shirt mean that there's any connections with the exchange, because I saw some comment in there, it's like, <laughs> is Gossip Guy for foreshadowing something? Let's just face it, I'm, 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 I'm not. But, um, so, <laughs> Nick, before we uh, wrap up here, I uh, got a really interesting question in here that comes from uh, Cooper Kunz from uh, the Hedera team. Um, I thought this was uh, really good to kind of ask to you. So basically, Cooper is asking, "Hey, Nick, any plans for what you're doing, uh, what you're going to do with mirror nodes uh, when they're available? I presume you'll run one." So yeah, I guess like how how would you use like mirror nodes in the context of like hashhash.info? Uh, no, no, I do not have a mirror node. No. Uh... 
but a mirror node, uh, what would do to something like a hash hash is, uh, first of all, it would give me access to uh, free scans. And I would also be able to listen to to uh, specific uh, messages, uh, so, sorry, transactions uh, for people to, I would be able to have transaction history, yeah. really. Uh, I wouldn't be able to to store every transaction history, uh, 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 every transaction because Hedera is really high throughput. Yeah. I couldn't do something like um, a, a, a scan because yeah. you're talking about a lot of transactions. And every time uh, people are going to be touching the network, that's a transaction, that's an event. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so I wouldn't be, I, I, the hard disk hasn't invented for that. Yeah. But it, uh, it's kind of interesting too, because then eventually if people, like clearly anyone that's going to be doing any financial services or any type of stuff, payments on Hedera, they're going to want payment history or, you know, the, the history of transactions. So. Correct, uh, and uh, and some DApps, for instance, they are always uh, uh, of particular public interest. This is where, for instance, you could focus on uh, keeping a very nice, clean uh, transaction history to have them a little bit accountable. <laughs> so, indeed, you you don't keep transaction history of everything, but you can filter uh, things that are of interest. Uh, the other thing is, of course, that uh, uh, when you have a mirror node, uh, you can provide that as a service uh, yep. you can come to gossip guy and tell him look gossip guy uh, uh, i can keep your transactions for yep. you uh leave it to me then i'll give you a log take it to irs uh, uh do whatever you want with that <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's, it's just nice because you can create specific channels geared towards a specific set of transactions yeah. that someone could yeah. hypothetically you know rent out to other entities that want to basically leverage that information so cool all right nick uh, i i i think we're kind of starting to uh run up against the clock here because uh you know i always try to keep these within like an hour and a half because this way people will actually come back and watch it in real uh uh playback here so if you don't mind uh i'm going to kind of start to uh wrap this up so um so i guess to just cover our last things here just thought to just quickly share some other topics uh, or updates, folks, um, you know, in case you uh, missed it. So uh, to kick things off, uh, there was a uh, forecast interview series that featured Mance Harmon. Uh, basically, forecast is this new news site that was started by Angie Lau, uh, who used to be uh, one of the uh, lead reporters um, on uh, Bloomberg um, Asia. So uh, I thought it was uh, really interesting to uh, see, uh, whoops, the website doesn't look like it wants to load up. Um, let's just go back to there. So yeah, basically uh, launched a new site and then part of that they've uh, featured, uh, you know, Hedera on it. So there was a series of uh, uh, interviews that featured Mats and uh, covered a lot of uh, interesting topics. Uh, one thing I thought was just kind of cool was to hear some perspectives as far as kind of like regulatory views as it relates to uh, Hedera. And according to Matt's, uh, there's obvious, there's some positive feedback from uh, global regulators as it relates to their network, which uh, I think is a, like I said before, Hedera's got a 12 month advantage over networks like Libra. I think that's obviously something that plays to their favor. So keep that leveraged. Um, so it was good to hear, um, you know, the feedback's been strong there. And yeah, he covered a lot of uh, uh, great topics there. So I definitely recommend you check it out. As always, link down below if you want to uh, look into it. Uh, another thing I thought was uh, interesting that was probably missed in the news, but just thought we would uh, uh, call it out here real quick, is that uh, I guess Hedera is announcing uh, moving to a new global headquarters in Richard uh, Richardson, Texas Telecom Corridor. Um, I don't know if this is the actual like location, if this is going to be entirely Hedera's, but long story short, Hedera's going to be uh, opening up an office there. So props to the team for potentially moving into a beautiful space. Uh, hopefully get a chance to at some point visit you guys in the future. Um, so that was a, a pretty cool uh, development to see there. Um, also great to see, you know, how Hedera is also kind of uh, setting up roots in the uh, Dallas uh, ecosystem, which many folks that, uh, uh, if you're not familiar, Dallas is a 
uh, area that's growing really quickly uh, as it relates to not only just um, tech, but financial services, telecommunications. So it's uh, booming there, and it's great to see uh, Hedera's uh, uh, coming along with uh, the growth there. And uh, lastly, uh, for folks that listen to the Gossip About Gossip podcast, uh, there was a really interesting one this past week. Uh, that talked about uh, rent, the concept of rent on Hedera and how you can basically offer up your services to other participants and then basically through proxy staking being able to you know, charge a rent for the use of the service without actually having to require people to pay you directly. I thought that was really interesting. Um, so uh, yeah, I thought these were really cool updates that I thought to share with everyone. Uh, so yeah, I guess this basically brings us to the end of the episode. So we covered a lot of stuff here. Uh, Hedera Consensus Services, uh, which really exciting development. We gave some thoughts on Libra, which uh, <laughs> hopefully people don't dislike me um, after this live stream for, for, for speaking about that. Like I said, our opinions. Just wanted to uh, give some perspectives. We talked about the community testing program and obviously highlighted uh, hashhash.info and all the great con contributions that are taking place there. And then we just went over those updates. So uh, Nick, I just wanted to thank you for, for taking the time to join me. I know it's really late there in London, uh, but it was really great having you on. And uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, I know so SupremeX67, my trusted co-host, wasn't able to join today because he had a conflict. So it was really great to have you on and uh, hope to have you uh, uh, back in the future. And uh, I guess before we part here, do you have any kind of like final words or final thoughts you wanted to uh, say to the community? Um, we still owe the smart contract testing that it starts. Yep. So, so we're still waiting for, for white smoke on this one. Uh, so it's it's all in, uh, in general testing. So it's going to come soon. So Cool. So we're looking very, very forward uh, to this one. Definitely. And uh, I guess... We look forward to your further updates, especially uh, all the great work you're doing over there at uh, hashhash.info. Thanks. So, all right. So I think we're going to wrap it up here. So I just want to give a big shout out to all the folks that have uh, joined uh, today's stream uh, or today's update. Uh, really appreciate your support. Really appreciate the uh, uh, great chat that we've had in the, uh, uh, the channel below. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to dive into all those questions or in comments, just partially because we had a lot of uh, uh, dense topics to cover today. We really appreciate the chats and really appreciate also folks from Hedera joining that, lending some other additional comments and, and uh, you know insights and perspectives to also uh, uh, clarify some of the things that uh, you know, I'm covering here. Appreciate you uh, uh, doing that. And uh, yeah, more importantly, really, uh, Excited to have everyone uh, be a part of this. Uh, really looking forward to uh, you know next developments to come as it relates to open access, which I personally think that we should all be kind of gunning for and, and focused on um, because this is where the real magic happens. And as I've also said to a lot of other folks in the community, keep in mind, open access is only the starting point, right? This is just the first milestone we need to get to before there's broader adoption and can push things out there because not to be taken as an offense but right now only thing you know the network right now is just basically a few nodes you know some things on paper some services that are up and running a couple wallets but open access is really the big turning point where um you know basically anyone can begin to build on it and the real vision of hedera uh, begins to take shape so really excited to hear more about it who knows in the next you know couple of weeks when we, what we'll learn about that? But uh, I'm hoping that uh, you know the summer will be uh, an interesting one as uh, we'll get more information on open access. So thank you again, folks, for for joining. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate Nick for for also uh, uh, joining us today. And uh, yeah, if you found the stream to be helpful, smash that like button. Also, too, I welcome anyone to put it down uh, or to dislike this if you didn't appreciate any of the topics. You know, feel free to do whatever you want. Uh, but really appreciate your support. Consider subscribing, and we will try to stream next week. So catch you then. Thanks, everyone.